we are young workers, but we are members of the AA in sleep in respective branches, provinces, and regions. And what is happening currently within the ANC Youth League, we must say it in the meeting of the ANC Youth League. It's not a rebuilding of the ANC Youth League, you must be honest. <laughs> not shying away because if we don't speak here, we go and speak on the social media. We are tarnishing the image of the ANC Youth League of Obita Mugabo, who are Tamo and Bumandela, who believe that this machinery must drive for future and must lead at all times. And this thing, it needs to work. This youth league must always be a center of attraction to all young people across the spread. Unlike Kosati Young Workers, we'll be saying our interests are basically on the most who are young workers who are working and not who are not employed. But yourself, it's a bus that takes everyone, a train that takes anyone. Poor, working, not having nothing, that's a train that we get into all of us. And comrades, Let's refrain on those matters. Because we don't have a home as a PYA except the ANC Youth League. The divisions, the factionalism, the gatekeeping of the ANC Youth League is damaging our reputation, comrades. We don't have a standing organization to say, let's stand and defend. Who do we defend? Whereas ourselves, we are dismantling each other. We are turning apart each other as if we are not in the same womb of the ANC. Do we love the ANC wholeheartedly or we love our self-interest? Let's understand that we are not leading ourselves, but we are leading the entire membership of the ANC Youth League that paid their subscription 10 rand for joining this ANC. And it's not about us, it's about the entire membership. Comrades, if you want to achieve the economic freedom of our times, Let's look at the pandemic we have done to young people of this South Africa. We must change our ideological thinking and transform on creations of jobs in ourselves to build the economy. What does it say? Are we going to rely on jobs that will be created by the government only or private sectors or SOEs? That's a question that we need to ask ourselves because pandemics has organized that many young people have lost more than a million of young workers have been retrenched, have lost their jobs in the current pandemic. And what is left for us in that particular time? Comrades, the generation of Peter Mugabe will not allow us to have a non-factional ANC Youth League. Okay, thank you. And also, comrades, what we want to tell you is that, comrades, let's refrain of attacking each other on the social media. Let's refrain attacking the ANC. Move away from bishops. Defend this movement. Because you are going to be sitting in the pockets of those bishops and you're going to be rendered useless. Time of overseas will come, will end. Your bishop will lose power in the ANC. Where are you going? Are you still going to be relevant? Comrades, we are ready to sit in this political school and idea and give our ideas. And we really like to thank the ANC Youth League to say keep on these relations. Go into provinces, go into regions, let's build it to the sub-regions and clusters. Because that young workers is there to be with you. And we are saying away with EPWP, away with the contractual jobs in any state of the government. That's the message of young workers. Thank you, comrades. Amanda. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Salo. Uh, the next speaker from the PYA will be, will be from COSAS, the Secretary General, Comrade Tunga. Amanda, how are you? The leadership of the ANC Youth League, President Tabumbe, in the ANC, we don't have former, we have president. The most important people, branches of the ANC Youth League, 
Because without them, there's no organization and PYA structures. Comrade Mbeki, as young people are worried about the ANC, today, comrades, our movement is no longer relevant to our people because of factionalism that is caused by our elders. And I'm saying to you, Comrade Nongeba, let's unite as young people and take over against elders. Because some of them, they are part of problems that we are having in the movement. They are fighting the exile issues in Robben Island. We were not there as young people. And today, comrades, we are speaking about renewal. What do we want to renew in the movement? Because you renew, but a certain According our language, uh, to our, our language, they are saying faction. They are above. And the ANC that we know is not about factionalism. It's to service our people. Our people, President Mbeki, they still love ANC. But the behavior of our elders makes our people not to vote for the ANC. Some of them, comrades, they have joined ANC because of tenders. Some of them today, they've stole enough and now they're stealing for their dogs. <laughs> then we want to inherit the ANC that is an opposition, comrades. Let's unite as young people, then we deal with them decisively. <laughs> and President Mbeki, I'm giving you this message. As an elder or a veteran of the ANC, because we have seen some veterans of the ANC that are causing divisions within the movement. As a veteran, you must guide. You must give shape to the movement. Don't be divisive. But some veterans, they are cursed in the movement. So we are saying to you, President, as the president, guide them to guide the movement. By a Moshe, President Mbeki. Some, they stole PPEs. They must be arrested. They stole from our people. You know, comrades, when you go and do door to door, when you enter near Georgia, we have never stolen anything. Comrades, we don't owe bishops anything. We owe ANC our loyalty. And bishops are there in church, not in the movement. And President, as young people who are concerned about the, the status of Kosatu, Kosatu speaks about factionalism of the ANC more than speaking about workers. Workers are being retrenched. Kosatu is quiet. But if somebody must step aside, you see them. <laughs> President, and even SACP, the SACP must shape politics of the ANC, President. The SACP must shape politics. But to take blue light of somebody, you'll see that SACP is alive. <laughs> and that thing is wrong, comrades. Comrades, look, today the youth league is irrelevant to young people. What do we do to bring back the youth league that we know? And comrade, knowing I your collective, we want to warn you, comrades. Don't be the youth league of elders. Be the youth league of young people. We are seeing conferences are entering. Comrades, let's fix the ANC youth league. Let's not rush to go to conferences. President Mbeki, how do you speak about renewal but one day conference? Because we need to have commissions. We need to have discussion documents. But the source that this youth league that we are seeing today, one day, whoop. <laughs> then we're saying we're renewing. Because our fear is that most of NYTT leaders, they were appointed because of their pocketed by Spaniban, not because of the view of young people. Some of leaders of the NYTT, they are protecting a certain couple of elders. Comrade, protect interest of young people. 
and we are lobbying PYA that Kosatu Young Workers, they must form part of the PYA because they are representing workers, young people in their space. Thank you very much, comrades. Amanda, viva Kosas, viva. Uh, comrades, uh, we are moving, comrades, uh, to the next speaker from the South African Student Congress. We'll call on stage the president, President Matiwan. Manda Manda Ganane Segusele Ganane Ganane Sezopomelela Ganane Manda, awe cho. Manda, awe cho. Forward with free quality education. Forward. Forward with free quality education. Forward. Thank you very much, comrades. Greetings to the president, comrade Tabom Begi. Greetings to the national convener of the ANC League, comrade Mangeba. Greetings to the YCL National Chair, Comrade Mabos. Comrades, uh, let me greet Comrade Banda from the Young Women's Death. Uh, Comrade uh, SG from COSAS. Uh, greet uh, the Secretary General of SASCO uh, together with this uh, collective. Uh, usually, SG will call himself. Uh, to man of our lifetime. So he wants to make history at the age of 31 to contest uh, the ANC as the Secretary General. <laughs> so we are here carrying that view as well. I uh, want to greet uh, all structures of the, the PYA, uh, all protocol observed. Uh, political power has always uh, presented his ideas through politics. Ideas have a responsibility to bring about development. And at, at some point, development must be sustainable. Then the question rises, how do we then sustain those ideas? It can only be a theory that can be able to analyze the future politics on how do we sustain those ideas I'm of the view that today we are here gathered to understand 
the politics of the African National Congress Youth League. We are here to have a way forward on how are we going to champion the interest of young people in South Africa. We know that part and parcel of the education's interest is to develop society, and we can only develop society through education. So political education becomes very relevant to all of us. But at the same time, comrade, we need to ask ourselves, are we the generation that is interested in political education? Are we here because we want to learn or we are here because we want to sit caucuses? Because I can tell you that the problem that is facing us as young people is that we no longer have interest on ideas. We no longer have interest on politics. Our interest is who gets to be elected so that our lifestyle can be maintained. So we need to reflect and be able to change that character as young people of South Africa. When I speak of that character, I am not excluding myself as well. Because we are faced with a serious demonic, a serious disease that wants all young people to always portray serious content on social media. To an extent that young people live in themselves, they are no longer disinterested only to the ANC, but to young people who are representing them, which is us. Because this platform must be able, this platform must be able to assist all of us as young people to reflect if what becomes our position to high number of unemployment in our country. What becomes our position to a high number of students who are carrying debts? Because you can't separate that relationship. If you are a student and you graduate with a debt, that means you can't even be employed because your documents are still withheld with that institution. Therefore, we are going to... Sorry, please. <laughs> because, comrades, we are here to give a message of support. So we must be able to be given an opportunity to share our frustration. <laughs> well, this man here is busy telling me, no, chief. <laughs> Probably we are going to be able to expand our engagements. Uh, but when I was engaging with comrades of SASCO, they gave me two points when it comes to the ANC and its conference. They said, President, you must be able to tell the ANC Youth League that the office of the national chairperson was made for a senior person in the ANC. Those who have led and left to come and bring wisdom. So the ANC Youth League has a responsibility to go and source that candidate so that the ANC can be stable. Two, the ANC Youth League has a responsibility outside the candidates that are there to identify a young person to contest the Secretary General's office in the ANC. Uh, we have said that the SASCO in Guadalupe corner, but uh, we'll engage uh, comrades. I want uh, to thank you very much. Amanda. Amanda. Uh, comrades, uh, we are really running out of time. We started late. 
uh, we've been briefing comrades that we are allocating them only five minutes. And we urge comrades to not give keynote address, but give a message of support straight and direct to the point. When we stand, comrade, to say your time is up, you must not feel as if we are abusing you. It's because we want to be economical with time so that we are going to fulfill the intention of this program. <clears throat> on that note, comrades, we are going to call on stage the National Chairperson of Ufasimba, the Young Communist League of South Africa, Comrade Mab a comrade Mabuse, to come and give us a message of support for five minutes. Thank you, comrades. Amadla, Amadla. Long live PYA, long live. Yeah, indeed, communists will not sell you, comrades. Yeah, will not sell you. Yeah, comrades, let me acknowledge the presence of former president, President uh, Thabo Mbeki, fountain of wisdom in African National Congress, interim president of the ANC Youth League. Uh, in YCL, we we use uh, scientific knowledge. So, yeah. So, Comrade Nongeva, the President of South African Student Congress, uh, Comrade Matiwani, uh, Comrade Mahafani, Kosas, the new from, fresh from the box, the leadership of Kosatu Young Workers and congratulations, uh, Comrade Jamela and Comrade uh, Mapaswe. Um, the, I think I've acknowledged all of your comrades' rank and file membership of the ANC Youth League. Comrades will not be long because we are here as well. Uh, to learn as the Young Communist League because we believe that uh, it's important to have a political education to heighten our understanding, uh, our understanding on a question of class contradiction and the class struggle. And Ourselves as young people, we have that responsibility of learning and to, be, to learn and understand the theory. We then need to translate that theory into practice. And that theory must confirm practice. And that practice, vice versa, must confirm the theory that we will inquire as a young person. We are young people that uh, we know that the liberation movement is at the crossroad and the only hope is young people. And the, we as young people, who are the hope? We can be the hope that does not have a scientific analysis, scientific knowledge that derived from a theory and knowledge because we can't be of body opinion if we don't learn, because ANC Youth League has its own ta twin task of political education and mass mobilization, which fight against the populism and cheap politicking that we see today that has caused fragmentation and competition among young people in organization. And that is a responsibility that you, in this political uh, sitting, you must learn so that you are able to know, to have concrete analysis of concrete conditions of your own, 
to overcome all class challenges. I know you understand your st content of your national strike that most of you, you are more because you are a nationalist, you are more of national strike As we are going to learn, uh, ourselves will be more on the class uh, strike as Young Communist League. So we are here in a nutshell to say we will be here throughout the political school to learn more, to gain more knowledge, to have more experiences uh, from this school. And we'll also share our ideas as the Young Communist League uh, in this uh, city. And uh, in those few ways, let's who are saying, let's thousand ideas a blossom amongst young people. And thank you very much. Amanda, long live PYA, long live. Long live. Unite PYA, unite. unite. Down with cheap populism, down. down. Thank you. That's Bonga, Shaloe, YCL. We'll now call the last speaker from the uh, PYA in its uh, reconfigured form. Uh, we'll call a speaker on behalf of the young uh, women of the of the young women's desk, uh, Comrade Kayagazitasi. Mandla, Mandla, Viva the ANC Youth League, the ANC Youth League, Viva, Viva the SACP, the SACP, Viva, Viva the YCL, the YCL, Viva. Viva Sasko 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 Viva Viva Kosas 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 Viva Viva the African National Congress Viva Viva the ANC Women's League Viva Amayanga Yanga Ayaroka I greet you comrades uh, in the name of the Black and Duke Brigade of the ANC Women's League uh, I greet all the structures and formations of the movement and all the guests of the ANC Youth League today. Uh, I especially greet you, Comrade Nongleba, as the leader of the organization that is hosting us, the ANC Youth League, today. And of course, uh, we are honored to have uh, President Mbeki with us uh, to teach us and for us to be able to learn and take lessons uh, from those who have been there before us and have walked the road before us. Uh, comrades, as the Young Women Desk of the ANC Women's League, we genuinely believe that the ANC Youth League is not dead, but it is in a phase. In 1991, the ANC Youth League had to be relaunched. The generation of Peter Mukaba uh, was seen taking center stage, redefining um, the activism of young people in this country, uh, redefining really and also assisting the ANC to find direction, defined program. It is one such phase um, that we are in even at this current juncture. But all of us need to reset, comrades. The broader movement needs to reset. Uh, if we see the G GS of the Communist Party and the president being whisked away by, from workers into an inyala, it must tell us something. It must either tell us that there's a growing distance between us and our people, or it must tell us that we need to relook and re-understand and reprogram ourselves in terms of how we really set the agenda um, moving forward. We cannot have a situation where we only cry foul and cry factionalism when such things are actually taking place. Surely, we must be able to look at the living conditions of our people and we must be able to say, as the movement, have we done true justice to such? We have victories to claim, comrades, I do not dismiss that, but clearly moving forward, 
broadly as the movement, there has to be more that we are able to say. And as the twin task of the ANC Youth League require us, um, political education that brings us here is going to be the basis for the programmatic action that we must undertake. And we can really have these real conversations without fear, without favor. Uh, President Mbegi, in these days in the movement, Siasaba Noguti, we talk about radical socio-economic transformation or radical economic transformation because immediately you are factionalized and put into a corner. Sikfanele Uti, we need radical thinking and transformative action um, in order for you to be able to have a discussion that really speaks to the needs of our people. And, and sometimes we call comrades fictional, Gandhi, you know, really they just don't know. Uh, they had one comrade saying radical economic transformation. They had another comrade saying inclusive growth. They don't know that the two speak to each other, but they understand to mean one faction or another. And the conversation about the real issues that our people are facing gets missed in the process. We need an ANC Youth League that will help us build the ANC that we want. One of the beautiful things that I would congratulate young people on at this point is that we no longer see ourselves as the future. Young people are swelling the ranks of structures of the ANC from one province to another. But even so, comrades, we must be able to then not be shooting arrows in a misdirection or in any other direction, but political education is fundamental and essential for us to be able to have young people that are able to help us define the kind of future that we want. So, you know, in terms of policies of the ANC, for instance, we are advanced, but we seem to be lacking understanding and conviction or one of the two. So we need to have our, our ability to implement them to a certain extent, and this is why political education is really essential at this particular point in time, and it's going to help us, you know, to, 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 to just have a distaste, man, for social conditions that some of our people live under, way below poverty lines, unemployment. Our politics must be that. Our politics must speak to unemployed youth, our politics must speak to, about our people that are living below, below poverty lines, the general national economy, entry, you know, breaking barriers to the real economy, not calling economic development, young people owning saloons and uh, car washes, but, but, you know, entry into the real economy for our people uh, broadly, not just um, young people. We must be able to define that moving forward. We always speak about attaining uh, gender equity. We claim our gains, um, really. We see young women, we see women taking up uh, certain positions in society, but we have not yet attained it for as long as we have not attained general understanding and we're not dependent um, simply on quotas for us to be there. We continue to fight, we continue to stand, emphasize non-racialism, we continue to say economic freedom must be attained in our lifetime. Mandla. Malibongwe. Ikamalama kosigazi. Ro, young lions, ro. Ro, comrades, can we wake up? Not you are tired. Ro, young lions, ro. Thank you very much uh, to the PYA uh, for their messages of support. Um, I always say that it is through the PYA that we're able to go into different spaces of society and be the strong, ideologically grounded comrades that we are in whatever space that we find ourselves in. It is through the PYA that our activism has been shaped and we are who we are today. With that said, I'd like to call upon Nokolo uh, Ngayo, who will give us a presentation on developing active citizenry and fostering um, uh, youth uh, education. Comrade Nokolo. <laughs> Program directors, um, President um, Beki, National Convener of the NYTT, Comrade Nongeba, members of the NC Youth League, NYTT, members of the PCPC, 
and all structures of the mass democratic movement. Distinguished guests, ANC, NYTT National, political school guests, and to avoid all protocol observed. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to extend my warmest congratulations to the ANC NYTT Political School Political Education Subcommittee, led by Comrade Precious Banda, for convening this important political school. As said, Utama Sankara in his famous We Are Heirs of the World's Revolution, he writes of the importance of the patriotic education and the results of the lack thereof. He borrows from Aristotle where he argues that political education is imperative for leaders to critically apply their professional competence in political endeavors in order to manage fairly professionally the affairs and resources of society. Thank you, Comrade Binder, for the invitation. We are honored to be part of the program. We trust that as you conclude the two days of the contributions and deliberations, you would have achieved your objective to rebuild, renew, revive, reimagine, and reposition the ANC Youth League towards economic freedom in our lifetime. Comrades, I bring with you, I bring with me greetings from our DVC, Professor Ntlamkize <coughs> Ukabazela, and our CEO Utandi Utandi Ngob Umapolob who was supposed to address you today in the seating, but could not, could not make it due to prior engagements. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Unokolo Ngai. I'm a research associate at the Fuse Institute of Humanitarian Praxis, situated at the University of Guazul Natal. Those who are familiar with us would know that we were, uh, we were previously known as the Dr. John Langalwalele Dube Institute, um, an institute based on the our ideals of our former statesman, Ubaba Udube. At the moment, comrades, and I think this is a common theme from um, the, the speakers that were here um, before me, the ANC is seen as the cure and the cause. It, is, it has good policies and strategies, but lacks implementation. And it's not that we're not developing or implementing, but implementation is happening at a gradual pace. And the gradual pace is done deliberately because it favors certain people and institution. We have created systems that will depend on certain individuals and families. Those that want power must go through organized national processes, yet those who have proximity to power are able to elevate their lives and lifestyles. We have leaders that publicly say the ANC does not know, owe anybody anything. We are funding and bailing companies that generate their own income. We call for youth empowerment, yet we do not have any ministers under the age of 35. Those that will, pro that will get proximity to power or those that sing for their butter, bread and butter on social media. Out of their goodwill, we, we will have young people who go out of the way to contest power. I think there's a common theme that Abandwati by power funneling a contest. What is a democratic society without power that is contested? If we don't have a leadership that is contested, it, we might as well have a, a soccer field. We have leaders that do not understand the challenges of society and can't solve problems. We lack radical leaders to constructively criticize the ANC as the mother body because we have engineered processes that depend on factual battles. The hand that feeds young people today controls them and their approach to leadership. The ANC cannot exist anymore, and as South Africans, we are so fixated with party po politics, yet when it comes to voting, and when it's convenient, we ask society to remember history. We ask society to remember O.O.R. Tamb. We have a ruling party that cannot control and influence the education trajectory of this country. We have youth sitting at home with qualifications, yet we have a minister that says, that does not understand why students still enroll for um, uh, qualifications in social sciences, yet they are not engaging with, with CHE, SAQWA, and higher education institutions to ensure that we have qualifications that are tailored to the needs of this country. We have a business sector that is influenced. Young people, surely we cannot be proud by the way that this country is being run. Comrades, as you convene here this weekend to discuss rebuilding and renewing the ANC Youth League, Parallel to your discussions, I want us to go beyond the rebuilding of the ANC and the ANC Youth League. 
This morning, I want us to think about how we can renew and rebuild society itself. I want to just think about how we, how, what a renewed society looks like. I want to just think about how we can restore confidence back into society. In order to rebuild a society, comrades, we need active citizenry grounded on civic education. We need citizens who are invested in their country, in its development, growth, and governance. So how do we achieve that? According to Winthrop, the concept of active citizenship is grounded in neoclassical school of thought. It is based on three areas, activity, responsibility, and democratic values. Active, active citizenship means people getting involved in their communities and democracy at all levels, from local to national levels. An active citizen promotes the quality of life in a community through political and non-political processes, developing the combination of knowledge, skills, values, motivation to work to make the difference in society. Active citizenship means people getting to society involved in their local communities at all levels, from towns to cities. These are members of society who take charge in their future and are agents for what they want to happen in the communities. It requires inspirational leadership at all levels and every aspect of life. And what qualities do they possess? We want an empowered society that understands that rights must be exercised with responsibility and not to shine to assert these. They have access to accurate, up-to-date information that government and its activities. Thus, government is obliged to provide information so that citizens can know what they're entitled to. And this is the role the Youth League should be playing. Secondly, fairness to society. Citizens must not only know the structures of processes that exist about how government processes work, especially the accessibility by women, children, youth, and people with disability. They play the game, but it's rules so that everything is predictable and transparent. And lastly, inclusivity in society must not only embrace the constitutional values of equality, dignity, and the freedom, but are willing to include or involve every irres everyone irrespective of their position, status, creed, or race. Everyone must have a sense of belonging and equal chance to exercise their rights. Right now, we're having people that are not even coming to vote because they feel that they're not part of the, 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 the governance of the, of the country. They feel that certain individuals certain individuals in political parties that are supposed to drive their governance. But over the past five to six years, we have witnessed a significant shift from party politics to organize active citizenry. And this is what I want us to be careful of. We've seen a number of independent candidates contesting elections arising from the failure of existing parties, as we have witnessed in the previous local government elections, to address societal interests and enhance democracy by proposing new and innovating legislation. However, while this is commendable, citizens playing a role in their growth and development, we need to be cautious of the cancel culture that comes with it and the danger of winning alone. Because now we have independent candidates that only represent what they represent and not a manifesto that is driven by a certain political party. According to Jennifer McCarran, an independent inter international expert and researcher, in civic education, divine civic education as a provision of information and experiences to equip and empower citizens to participate in the democratic processes. Civic education can take place in different forms, including classrooms, learning, informal education, and, and mass media campaigns. Those who are older than us would probably would know that civic education was once um, part of the curriculum, and today we don't have it. And that's why probably we see the kind of society that we're seeing today and the youth that is not even involved in the governance of this country. The importance of civic education to national development um, signifies the civic education society towards economic development. It provides that this form of education helps in the acquisition of skills. This ranges from being active citizens in society and to be aware and involved in government activities. It is detrimental to the involvement of society or community, politically, economically, and socially. Civic education can be a tool to be employed to society to deal with GBV, unemployment, and combating crime, which are challenges that are impacted negatively on the livelihoods of the country. We've seen over the, we've seen over the past few months, um, I don't want to say radical um, organization <laughs> that has taken governance into their own hands in dealing with certain structures. As, as, as 
as much as it is, it is a good organization and they've got a good objective in mind, but if left out, um, if left to them, it could actually take a different direction. And that's for why it is important that political parties need to control um, the, the mushroom um, mass, um, okay, let me not get into it, it's important. So just to close off, comrades, um, civic um, education is the main aspect in which these objections can be met. Promoting and instilling the mindset of education in the youth at all local levels must be a great start to active citizen engagement. The ANC and the ANC Youth League in its core mandate should be committed to advancing lives and society intellectually. The only way we can achieve this is through education. Economic freedom in our lifetime can only be achieved in the rebuilding and renewing of the ANC is done in parallel with the rebuilding of society. Thank you so much, comrades. Thank you very much. Uh, comrades, <clears throat> as we indicated before, that we are very pressed in terms of time, and we really apologize to all speakers who will have to come here, that they will have to shorten their address because we don't want to inconvenience uh, the president. We just want to make sure that uh, the time allocated to him is sufficient to engage us as young people of the ANC. So we are going to move, comrade, to the next item where we will call the national convener of the ANC NYTT, comrade Nongleba, to come and address us and set tone for this political school. Amanda, Amanda, uh, thank you very much, uh, Comrade uh, Pinky. I didn't know you could sing so well, leadership. Now we know. <laughs> no comments. I, I, I'm limiting the singing because we are really running behind time. Um, uh, but uh, that's why we, we are trying to really um, ramp up our, our program. Uh, thank you very much to our two program directors, Comrade uh, Toli and Comrade Njabulo. Um, I wasn't briefed how much time I have, so I do hope that I've got more than the five minutes that everyone else has given me, <laughs> and that I won't have someone standing behind me in the next five minutes. Uh, greetings to former President uh, Mbeki, as well as the comrades who are accompanying him from the Tabo Mbeki Foundation. Uh, greetings to uh, comrades of the PYA who have joined us here today uh, as led by the president of uh, the leadership of the delegation of SASCO as led by the president of SASCO, the delegation of COSAS as led by the SG of COSAS, uh, the delegation of the YCL as led by the national chair of the YCL, uh, the delegation of the young women's desk as led by, I'm not sure what capacity comrade Garabo is in here. I thought she was NYTT, now I'm told that she's here in another capacity. Um, the delegation of COSATU young workers um, as led by their brand new from the box leadership um, as they've come from their Congress. Um, as well as the NYTT members who are present here today, uh, members of the political education subcommittee. And I think I must just start by really appreciating all of the work that the subcommittee has put in. Um, I don't think that the ANC Youth League um, has had a national political school in at least the last five years or so. So we must thank and congratulate the subcommittee for seeing the need to have this program um, whilst uh, we are being told to have BGMs, go to Congress, the subcommittee said, ah, ah, we want politics. We're not just going to go to Congress without politics. So thank you for convening us here, Comrade Banda and your team, uh, and forcing us into discussing politics and the politics of the Youth League, the politics of the movement, 
and the politics of our, our country in general. And most importantly, comrades, all the delegates who've joined us here today uh, on this cold winter morning, um, and all the participants as well who have, have joined us today. Comrades, receive our warm greetings and, um, and, and our appreciation for making time to spend the next two days with us as members of the Congress Youth League to reflect on the state of our movement, which is in dire state, the state of young people, which is equally dire, the state of our people and the state of the country in general. That is really what we want to do, comrades, in the next two days. We want to reflect on the state of the Youth League. We want to reflect on the state of the ANC. We want to re reflect on the state of the country and its people. Um, and that is why we are here today. Comrades, we meet exactly a year after the appointment of the ANC Youth League Task Team, having been mandated by the ANC NEC to rebuild and to revive the Congress Youth League. From the very onset, we understood our role, though we are actually named a National Congress Preparatory Committee, we were all shocked when we got our letters of appointment uh, because we are used to an NTT and we were told, no, you are an NPCPC. Um, and I think we decided to discard that name along the way. Um, we always understood that our task, comrades, uh, transcends the mere logistical arrangements and organizing a conference, but rather a task that demands a political program of action towards, building, towards bringing back to life, a to life at a political and organizational level the ANC Youth League and handing it over to its rightful owners, which is the youth of the country. It is therefore for this reason that we adopted the concept document and the theme, which is the theme that we meet under today, which is to rebuild, to revive, to renew, to reimagine and reposition the ANC Youth League for economic freedom now as our base document which informed our program of action over the past 12 months. We understood that the task of renewal will not be easy and we can attest that it has not been easy at all. The burden of unlearning the things that brought us here and, the, and unlearning those things that reduced our, capa our fighting capacity as young people is heavy. We have noted how in some instances we have made great strides in rebuilding, in our rebuilding efforts and in some instances we have severely failed. We can attest, comrades, and agree that we still experience instances of gatekeeping. The, the comrades who spoke here spoke about problems of factionalism. Uh, one of the comrades who spoke here spoke about the politics of bishops and handlers still being rife in the movement as we continue in our rebuilding efforts. And these are challenges, comrades, that we will continue to face because rebuilding is not an event but a process. It is for this reason that today's gathering comes at an opportune time wherein as young, as young people we must honestly reflect on our rebuilding efforts and the next urgent steps required for, true renewal, for the true renewal of the ANC and that of the ANC Youth League to take place. The ANC Youth League as a preparatory school of the ANC cannot afford not to prioritize political education and ideological training. Therefore, this political school is one of the many initiatives we will be embarking on to deepen the battle of ideas and to conscientize young people for the battles ahead, as Comrade Banda has said. Comrades, from its inception in 1944, the ANC Youth League was an organization of highly skilled and action-orientated men and women a group of individuals who assessed what that particular period required and formulated not just a solution and paper, but more importantly, a program of action. The following detailed abstract, abstract from the 1944 manifesto illustrates such an action-orientated plan. To open quote, the formation of this league is an attempt on the part of youth to impart to Congress a truly national character. 
It is also a protest against the lack of discipline and the absence of a clearly defined role in the movement as a whole. The Congress Youth League must be the brain thrust and power station of the spirit of African nationalism, the spirit of African self-determination, and the spirit that is so discernible in the thinking of our youth. It must be an organization where young men and women will meet and exchange ideas in an atmosphere pervaded by a common hatred of oppression. At this power station, the League will be a coordinating agency for all youthful, youthful forces employed in arousing popular political consciousness and fighting oppression and reaction." Close quote. When the ANC was formed in 1944, that was a movement of renewal to reposition the movement by broadening its base among a critical sector of society, which is youth. This changed the ANC from a petitioning organization to a fighting mass-based revolutionary movement. Comrades, the ANC this year is 110 years old and the ANC Youth League is turning 78 years old in September. The basic objective of the existence of the ANC Youth League has evolved to be defined in its twin tasks, which is mainly to mobilize and rally young people behind the banner of the African National Congress and to champion its interest and to champion the interest of young people. Besides advancing these two tasks, the ANC Youth League is regarded as a political school that prepares leadership of the, for the ANC in particular and for the movement in general. The formation of the ANC Youth League in 1944 was led by the generation of gallant fighters, which included Nkolisi Machombosi, uh, A.P. Mdak, Comrade Anton Lebede, Walter Sisulu, Owar Tambo, Comrade Nelson Mandela, and Albertina Sisulu, to name a few. Among these, um, among those who gathered on the 10th of September in 1944 at the Bantu Men's Hall in Johannesburg to give birth to the ANC Youth League. This generation defined its task as the achievement of freedom for the people of South Africa in their lifetime. They could, define, they, they could clearly define what their generational mission was. In 1944, Comrade Peter Mugaba said, the ANC Youth League must adapt or die, arguing at the time that the Youth League of the governing party must define and lead youth development. In this present day, we continue to grapple with the question of what is the necessary and effective youth development institute we need for our country. And we are happy that we are also joined in another capacity as well by the deputy chairperson of the NYDA board, Comrade Karab. Thus, they took a leading role in the struggle and defined the perspective that the ANC was to follow. This perspective brought radical form to the struggle as contained in the 1949 program of action which was presented to the ANC. Their sacrifices invigorated the ANC into an action-driven movement that confronted the apartheid regime head on. We can mention a few young activists that sacrificed their lives. The killing comrades of Ashley Creole on the 9th of July in 1987 at the tender age of 20. He was shot by the apartheid police while handcuffed in his house in Hazendale in Athlone on the Cape Flats. The late Solomon Kalushi Mashangu, who joined Umkondo camp in Angola in 1976 when he was nearly 20 years old. The tender age of 22, he was executed by the apartheid government for a crime he did not commit. These struggles and sacrifices of young people instilled the relevance of the ANC to the masses um, to the masses of our people who are beginning to lose hope and trust in the ANC as a liberation movement. Comrades, 28 years later, we have noted how through our electoral misfortune, misfortunes as a movement and general lack of public trust in the country, and some may argue even on the continent as a whole, that our people are losing hope in the ANC as a leader of society. Comrades, we are sure that you would have read and internalized our ANC Youth League discussion document, a concept paper rather, as adopted by the NYTT, 
in July last year and publicly launched in September last year. In that document, comrades, and we do hope that it will be printed and circulated. Oh, I was informed that we live in a digital age. Uh, all the documents, comrades, are available digitally because we are trying to save trees and move with the times. So you should all have the documents with you. <laughs> In that document, comrades, um, including the document that is going to be outlined by the Political Education Subcommittee, uh, Comrade Zuko, after this, um, will present, um, will outline what we define as the true renewal and revival of the Congress Youth League. We do this, comrades, against the backdrop of taking stock of how we got to the point at which we find ourselves here today and what the urgent steps that ought to be taken to respond to the state of youth in the country. Naturally, the primary task of the ANC Youth League is to build the foundation of the NYTTs, to build the foundation of the ANC Youth League so that we can take the organization to its 26th National Congress. Accordingly, comrades, this task is both organizational in the form of the administration, but also political, which is, and, and political, which is part of the work that we are doing here today. Our organizational and administrative task calls on us to focus on having credible constitutional structures of the ANC Youth League from branch to national level. We need to be able to ask ourselves, are branches of the ANC Youth League properly constituted as per the constitution of the ANC Youth League? Are the regional and provincial congresses that we are having properly convened and constituted as per the conscripts of the ANC? And if our answer to those questions are no, what must be done to fix that as we are on this path of renewal? Equally, comrades, at a political level, we need to respond to the question of whether we are serving our purpose as an organization as outlined in Article D of the Constitution of the ANC Youth League. We must ask ourselves, are we rallying the youth of our country to support and unite behind the ANC Youth League and actively participate in the struggle to create a non-racial, non-sexist, united, united democratic and prosperous society? Do we support and reinforce the African National Congress in the attainment of the goals of the National Democratic Revolution? Are we ensuring that youth make a full and rich contribution to the, world, to the work of the ANC and to the life of the nation? Do we champion the general interests and rights of the South African youth in the, soci the socio-economic and political life of the country? Are we promoting unity and patriotism among youth? Do we promote the creation of a broad, non-aligned pioneer movement and are we fighting for the rights of children? Do we strive and work for the educational, moral, cultural upliftment of young people in the country? Do we promote gender equality in all spheres of life, especially among youth? Are we promoting among youth a spirit of international solidarity, peace, and friendships with other nations? And lastly, do we champion the cause of African Renaissance and the development of the African continent? These questions that I've raised, comrades, are actually the aims and objectives of the ANC Youth League as outlined in the constitution of the ANC Youth League. Comrades, this political school must, over the next two days, ponder on the above questions listed and provide solutions that will assist the NYTT and all structures of the Congress movement to truly, to, to truly be on path in terms of renewing and rebuilding the organization. We must also reflect on what the challenges have been that we have encountered since our appointment and the elections of the various structures across the country since uh, April 2021. Are we in a better position today than we were in April 2021, or are we worse off? It is our well-considered view that we ought to answer all these questions frankly, so that we can truly, so, we, so that we can do a, so that we can do, we can truly do an assessment that is informed by critical and honest reflection. 
As young people, we must define our renewal agenda as a program to restore the revolutionary image of our organization. Not for its own sake, comrades, but the ANC as a sanctuary of the best hopes of the people of South Africa. Renewal must be about restoring public confidence in the movement, in its management and of, pub and of public affairs through revolutionary morality, which is an attitude towards the public mandate given to us by the electorate. Our renewal program must reposition the movement for modern day struggles as we live in a globalized and digitized world. Comrades, our renewal agenda must build capacity in the ANC to tackle vulnerable vulnerabilities in its mass character. And we do hope that that's one of the issues that we are going to be discussing here today. As we take stock of our work, we must also be reminded that, it, that 2022 is also a very busy year in terms of our political calendar, not only for the ANC and its leagues, but also for our alliance structures. It is a year of conferences and it's also a year for us to ramp up service delivery to improve the quality of life of the people of this country. Now, beyond our discussions of who must lead, what is most important is that these conferences should serve as a platform to unite and reposition the movement. More than anything, the ANC National Congress will be a turning point for the renewal of the movement, if we are serious about it. Included in this busy schedule, comrades, is the 26th National Congress of the ANC Youth League. The National Congress of the Youth League should be used as a platform to sharpen the focus of young people in our movement on our historic twin tasks. The 26th National Congress must be as significant as the 1944 moment, and it must be as significant as the relaunch of the Youth League in 1991. With all the initiatives by government to ensure that young people have access to opportunities in life, young people are still confronted with major, with major struggles and challenges today, with increasing rates of youth unemployment accompanied by high levels of poverty and inequality. All this, comrades, is, direct, is directly linked to the, our articulated vision of economic freedom now or never. We've now said it is no longer in our lifetime, it is now or never. This vision, comrades, is still very much relevant. It speaks directly to the current phase of the NDR, of which in the ANC Congress was coined as the second phase of the revolution. The second phase of the revolution that we are embarking the second phase of the revolution is about embarking on radical socio-economic transformation programs to ensure that the previously disadvantaged are part of the economic mainstream in the country. In conclusion, comrades, before Comrade Tolly and Njabula come stand behind me, we are here at this political school to remind each other that first and foremost, we are servants of the people and that we are servants servants of young people in particular. Like soldiers who frequently uh, refine their shooting skills, activists of the movement must forever refine their skills on mobilization, analysis, execu and execution of our strategic objectives. The challenges facing young people are mammoth. They do not require mere sloganeering. They require young men and women who are of sufficient knowledge and experience with the intent to solve those challenges. We must, however, remind each other that our agency for change does not rest within the party, but amongst the motor forces. Leaving the school, comrades, each and every one of us must go home with more vigor and zeal to mobilize and set systems to champion the interest of youth. All of us here today are not mere representatives of structures we lead. We are here of the people and as servants of the people. And as this organization belongs to the people, so do we. Our major concern, therefore, is not merely winning elections and occupying state offices for the sake of self-aggrandizement. Our concern is the end, not the means. 
it is our primary concern to fight unemployment, poverty, and inequality. To this end, comrades, must be the creation of a non-racial, non-sexist, democratic, united, and prosperous country. The task undoubtedly needs ideological, astute activists. Therefore, comrades, in the words of Chairman Mao, let a thousand flowers bloom, let a hundred flowers bloom, and a hundred schools of thought content. Amandla, Amandla. Viva the ANC Youth League, viva. Malibongwe. Uh, comrades, I think it would be a grave injustice to not comment um, the work that Comrade Nongleba and her collective in the NYTT are doing to ensure that the ANC Youth League um, is rebuilding and is restored to its former glory. I think um, let's give them a round of applause for that process. Uh, with that said, comrades, um, it's all good and well for us to speak about rebuilding the ANC Youth League, renewing, reviving, repositioning, but it's also crucial that we elevate the discussion and speak to what it means to rebuild the organization, which is the ANC Youth League. Because if we don't, then we run the risk of being populist and actually not addressing the systemic issues that young people are facing in this country. With that said, I'd like to call upon Comrade uh, Zugo Kodlimpi, who will give us um, a presentation on the renewal and rebuilding um, of the ANC Youth League, and of course also speak to the state of the youth in South Africa. Comrade Zugo. Thank you, Comrade Program Director. Greetings to President Mbegi, uh, greetings to Comrade Convener, and greetings to all members of the Youth League and the PYA who are here today. I've been asked by the, the National Political Education and Ideological Training Subcommittee to present a brief remarks on the question of the state of the South African youth the ANC Youth League and the problems of renewal that we are all discussing. And we are doing this exercise in an attempt to create a broad framework of thinking that all of us as the Youth League must adopt as we approach the 26th National Congress of the Youth League in a month's time or so and the National Conference of the ANC in December. So I will outline just broad ideas that we have, but the substance of the discussion will emerge from plenary and hopefully everyone will be, will be, will be interested in that sort of conversation. We thought let's have a, a, an overview of the state of youth so that we channel the renewal of the Youth League towards attempting to transform